Okay, straight out the gate, can you tell the difference between this, this, or this? That's the big question we're addressing today. It's the filed versus unfiled reads debate. And I think I've come up with the ultimate test and we're gonna put this thing to bed once and for all. So what the hell is a filed read and an unfiled read? Anyway, very quickly then, an unfiled read, sometimes called American cut, is where the when you slice the read, the vamp just goes straight into the cut portion of the read. You can see a close up there of what an unfiled read looks like. On the other hand, a filed read, sometimes called French cut, there is a line cut across the bark with a kind of semi-trimmed section, like a horseshoe semi-trimmed section between the bark and the main cut. That is the difference between unfiled and filed reads. But what difference in sound is there? Well, allegedly with an unfiled read, there is a greater mass of material on that read. So it's gonna be more resistant, have more core to the sound and be slightly darker in nature. Whereas the filed read, you've got rid of some of the material there. So it's gonna be brighter, a bit buzzier um, and a little bit, you know, a little bit more fast to respond. That is the basic theory of filed versus unfiled reads. However, in our recent interview in the Inner Circle membership with Jack Tyler, Jack was saying, hey, there's absolutely no difference because the ligature clamps down on the reed and the area that we're discussing isn't in play. It does not vibrate. No, it's, it's uh, how should I say, it's bullshit. Yeah, okay, so think about it, right? <laughs> think about it, think about it. The phasing curve starts on most mouthpieces well above the window. This is all flat up to like here. Now you tell me where that second cut is on that read. It's back here. It's not doing right. anything. It's being okay. clamped down by the ligature. It's not vibrating. It's not sealing. Yeah, it's 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 marketing. It's stupid. It, it doesn't, it, there's no physical way that that could have any effect. That's why Diodari gets to sell the same read twice. I've always joked about that. It's, it's, it's the same read. It doesn't matter, you know? I mean... <laughs> So I thought that makes sense. But then uh, based on all the controversy that we're seeing online about it, I thought let's put this to bed once and for all. So I've concocted the ultimate test to see if it's a myth or it's real. Right, now this is where you come into it because this is gonna be an audience participation event. I want you to get a bit of paper or your phone. I'm gonna play you five unfiled reads, five filed reads. And after this test, I'm gonna give you full details of how I did this. And I just want you to write down for each number, one to 10, U or F, unfiled or filed. Remember, filed reads, have, they've taken some stuff away. It should be brighter and a bit buzzier. Unfiled reads should be a bit more kind of a, a solid core and a bit darker. So let's start the test. Get your notepads ready. And in the comments below, once you've got the results, I want you to say how many you got right out of 10.
Now, to save time, because there's 10 different examples, there's only one little short snippet that I've played, which is an excerpt from A Love Supreme by John Coltrane. Inside the Inner Circle membership, there's a much longer, more full sound test. So if you're in the Inner Circle, you can go into the YouTube Backstage Pass video, and there's a much more comprehensive test. But to keep things short for YouTube, you should still be able to tell if there is a difference. So just before we get into the results, and I'll give you a few more details about how this test actually works and why it's going to be a real definitive answer, if you want to get better at your sax playing all round, go and check out my free saxophone success masterclass. It is a solid hour of teaching, which can really move the needle on your improvising tone. It's got tricks about um, how to Im improve your sound, how to improve your solos, how to improve your technique. All this stuff is super cool. It's available for you. It's completely free. Just fill in your email. The link is there or you can click the link in the description. Okay, now let me fill you in on exactly how this test <laughs> has been done under scientific conditions so that we can be sure that we're really gonna get a good answer here. Okay, first of all, what reads did I use? Well, I used the Dario Select Jazz Organics because they're one of the few, if the only, if not the only reads I could find which you can get exactly the same read and one is filed and one is unfiled, and the strength I used was 3M, three medium. So that's the reads I used for the test. Now, you know what it's like when you've got a box of five reads, there might be a few duffs in there. So I did make sure that all the reads were gonna play really well before I started the test. I got my read geek and I flattened the back of the read. I balanced the strength of both sides of the read by turning my mouthpiece. And if there was a major problem, like it was just completely dead, I would use the Read Geek to try and get all the reads in the box of five for each of the boxes sounding, you know, exactly the same if I could in terms of how hard they were and make sure that there wasn't a complete dud in there. So that's the first thing I did to prepare the reads. And then I left them to soak for a minute or two in some water. Next thing I did, I put them back in the sleeves upside down so I couldn't see if the read was filed or unfiled. And I put a piece of sticky tape over each of the labels so I couldn't see if they were filed or unfiled. And then I shuffled up those 10 reads on the desk completely randomly. After that, I took a read out of the case got it wet, and then I worked out a really cool foolproof way of putting the read on without having to look at it and see if it was filed or unfiled. I worked out a way of covering it up so that I could get the read straight and dial up and, you know, and tighten up the ligature with my eyes closed and then put it in my mouth. So I did not have a clue what read I was playing. After that, I played through the, the set repertoire for the read. And when I was finished, I made some remarks on a piece of paper and numbered one to 10, made a note based on playing it alone if I thought it was filed or unfiled. After that, I carefully took the read off with my eyes closed. I slipped it back into the case and I put it over to the side and moved on to the next one. Now the microphone I used for this is an absolutely awesome ribbon microphone made by AEA. It's the KU5A and that went straight into my Apogee Duet 3 audio interface, which is a really high end interface. And that went into Logic where I recorded it a high quality with completely flat channel okay so no audio processing whatsoever now here's why this test is so cool because we all know that things might feel different even if they sound the same from the other side of the horn so i thought let's get to the bottom of this as well so after that i had a, a clever way of working out which audio file was which in logic i renamed them all zero so i could not see which audio file was which and then I shuffled them all up on the screen randomly for ages until I knew they're in a completely random order. Now, bearing in mind, I'm playing exactly the same thing each time. And then after I'd listened to each one on really high quality headphones and, and uh, worked out which one I thought was filed and which one I thought was unfiled, I could stretch the audio files back out because at the beginning of each take, I'd done one clap for one, two claps for two, and so on. But I couldn't see those claps when I was listening. So I was listening completely blind and I made a note of which ones I thought, and I wasn't looking at my original list either. So I had a list of unfiled or filed for the playing experience and unfiled or filed for the listening experience. Obviously, you're just gonna be able to do the listening experience. So I'm gonna play the clips again, but this time you'll see if you were right or wrong about filed or unfiled, and then I'll tell you what my results were, and there's some really interesting stuff which is gonna come out here, so check this out. Thank you. 
So first of all, here were my results from the actual play test so that you can compare it to what you thought. And now I've layered on the results from the audio test. Now here's the interesting thing. Only four of my results from the play test matched those from the audio test. You can see those with the green ticks. So the playing experience must have been completely different from the listening experience. So there's a really fascinating thing because only four out of 10, I thought the same and I was the same player. Okay, let's now move on to the actual full results and have a look. Next to the play test and the audio test, you can see if I was right or wrong compared to the third column there, which is the actual read, you know, unfiled or filed. Obviously, uh, F is filed, U is unfiled, obviously. Now, the interesting thing is, look, on the play test, I actually got six out of 10 right, which is above, you know, the sort of average from random. However, in the audio test, eight out of 10, I got correct, which is way above, you know, the uh, statistical average of, you know, halfway for a, basically a coin flip. So I could obviously hear the difference a lot more than feeling the difference when I was playing. And that is fascinating. And in the final column, the only, there were only four that I actually got correct by getting the play test and the audio test both correct. <laughs> Four out of 10, which is actually less than, less than average. The final interesting point is there was never a situation where I agreed with myself with the play test and the audio test, and it turned out to be wrong. The four that you see which I got correct, I agreed for the play test and the audio test and they were right. So I didn't, I was never unanimously wrong, which is interesting. So what is the conclusion from all this then? So pending the results of you listening to these tests and posting the results in the comments, we really don't have any fantastic conclusions. I, I honestly thought there would be no difference whatsoever in playing or listening. However, there was a difference in playing and there was a much bigger difference in listening. However, when you try and combine the two, it was actually below average. So <laughs> I don't think there's really any conclusion, but I did, interestingly, I did feel when I was playing the reads that some ha were more resistant and darker and some were brighter and buzzier. It's just that that feeling didn't necessarily correlate to actual reality. And probably the final conclusion which I would draw from this fascinating experiment is, I would say that there's more variation between individual reads than there is between filed or unfiled. And actually, uh, one final comment is that one thing it proved is that these select jazz reads are very, very consistent because between 10 reads out of two boxes, number one, all of them were completely perfectly playable. I could have gigged on them that night. And there wasn't a tremendous difference in strength or variation between all those reads. I know I did a little bit of work with the read gate, but not a lot. So very consistent reads. And the conclusion is, if you think there's a difference, maybe there is, but in reality, probably the variation between uh, the actual natural variation in the reads probably outweighs filed versus unfiled, but you know, listening back, it was eight out of 10. So that's just gotta say something. So that's all I've got time for today. Hope you enjoyed joining me to try and put this debate to bed once and for all. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've actually done that. I've probably just made things worse. But thanks for watching as always. Uh, don't forget to go and grab your free, uh, your free masterclass, which uh, the link you can see there, or you can click the link in the description. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a far more extensive listening test available for you inside the Inner Circle membership, which is my online membership, which is a, just an awesome place to be if you want to improve your sax playing, make new friends, have a great community, and a whole lot more, including special guests. And um, finally, if you bought me a coffee, I really appreciate it. You are very, very kind. Thank you very much. And until next week, make sure you practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy.
So all four of the ones that I got correct were... Now one other interesting thing is that all the correct ones... Now one other interesting comment is that I never thought that I never... What is it that you think? Get it. Spit it out, sunshine.